Good day, my name is John Steele from the University of New South Wales. This is the first of a series of videos I'm going to be recording on complex analysis. So these are videos meant for a second course in complex analysis, not a first course. So I would expect you to know all about the complex numbers, what a complex number is, uh, real parts, imaginary parts, polar form, uh, how to take roots, how to use uh, roots of uh, complex numbers to factorise simple polynomials both over the complex and the real numbers. Uh, in this series of videos I'll go through some theory and then some problems. I'll try and take the problems not from our problem set but from former class tests. Uh, they'll be typical problems of the sort you'll face uh, in the complex analysis courses. But I want to begin here by looking at some uh, basic complex numbers, geometry really, with inequalities. Now, when it comes to inequalities in uh, complex numbers, there are two basic inequalities. The first one, almost the mother of all inequalities, is this one here at the beginning, the triangle inequality. The modulus of z plus w is less than or equal to mod z plus mod, mod w. Now, notice I've written the plus sign in red here. That's to indicate that, although it's normally remembered with a plus sign, uh, that plus sign there can be a minus sign, because mod of z w is the same as mod of minus w, so you can just... Uh, change this one on this side. Now, geometrically, uh, how to spot what's going on here, z plus w, if you remember when you add complex numbers, you're really adding vectors. So on the diagram down here, if that's z and that's w on the argand plane, to add z and w, you would take uh, mod z here, translate it up to w, and you would find mod of z plus w would be well, it would be somewhere around here. And the triangle inequality says that modulus of z plus w, modulus, remember, is the distance from the origin, the distance from the origin here out to z plus w is less than the sum of the distance out to w plus the distance out to z. Because we've got a triangle here, if, you, if that is z, that triangle, I should fill it in, I suppose, that length, that side of the triangle there, is shorter than the sum of the other two sides of the triangle. The other inequality doesn't really have a set name, but I'm going to refer to it as the circle inequality. It says that mod of z minus w is greater than or equal to the modulus of mod z minus mod w. Once again, I've written the sign here in red because it could be positive. It's normally remembered as a negative sign, but that's what you normally see in the textbooks, but uh, it could be a positive sign. The plus and minus sign on the other side of the inequalities for both triangle and circle, they're fixed. You have to have a plus sign for triangle and a minus sign for the circle inequality. Now, the geometric meaning of the circle inequality is a little trickier to spot, and it's not uh, something that occurs in many textbooks, in my experience anyway. But what it's really saying is, to go back to the diagram, the modulus of z minus w is in fact the distance of the point z from w. Whether it's z minus w or w minus z doesn't matter. So it's this distance here, from w to z. So that's the mod that length there is the modulus of z minus w. And what the circle inequality says is that that distance is always bigger than the difference between mod z and mod w, well, that is the difference between the radii of these two circles here. Mod z is that distance, mod w that distance. So the radius of the inner circle is mod z, radius of the outer circle, mod w, and mod of z minus w is the distance between the two circles. So this is saying z and w can't be any closer than the, distance between, the difference between the radii of those two circles. They could be equal, of course, if z and w happen to have the same argument, then this is an equal sign, and in fact the same thing would occur for triangle inequality. Right. One other thing I should mention before we look at an actual problem using these inequalities is that the triangle inequality can be generalised. It's usually written as two, two complex numbers here, but in fact it could be any number of them, and it would still work. It's good, so it could be, you can have mod of z1 plus z2 plus as many as you like, that will still be less than or equal to modulus of z1 plus 
z2 plus and so on. Proofs quite straightforward because you just apply the triangular equality several times. The circle inequality on the hand doesn't generalize. If you've got three things here to use a circle inequality for, you have to be a bit cleverer about what you do. I'm going to show you what we do in that case when we come to the problem. Okay, so here is a typical problem of the sort we face in uh, at the start of our complex analysis course. We're going to show that if the modulus of z is equal to 3, so we're on the circle centered the origin radius 3, then this polynomial here, z cubed minus 5iz plus 4, its absolute value lies between 8 and 46. Right. Well, the first part of this is straightforward, that the less than or equal to part, less than 46, because we're just going to be using the triangle inequality, which remember we can have three different uh, terms in here, it doesn't make any difference to it. So let's do that part first. So the modulus of z cubed minus 5iz plus 4 is less than or equal to, well, the modulus of z cubed, now it's minus 5iz, but remember the minus sign doesn't matter inside here, so we ha just have plus the modulus of 5iz, plus the modulus of 4, which of course is just 4. Right? Now, if you remember from your first course in complex numbers, the modulus of z cubed is just modulus of z all cubed, and we're fixed on mod z equals 3, so this is 27, the first term, 3 cubed. The modulus of 5iz is 5 times the modulus of i, which is just 1, times the modulus of z, which is 3, of course. So this term here is, well, we'll write it out, shall we? 5 by 1 by 3, plus the modulus of 4, which, of course, is just 4. So we've got 27 plus 15 plus 4, which is 46. So that's the first part done. The triangle inequality part, always very straightforward. All right, so now let's look at the other half of the problem, showing getting the lower bound on the polynomial. This is usually the trickier part, and it's the part that uh, you need more of later on. And the, question, the problem we face, of course, is the circle inequality is only allowed to have two things inside the absolute value sign. So you've got to work out what to do about it. Well, argue it this way. The modulus of z cubed minus 5iz plus 4 is to be greater than or equal to... Well, what we've got to have to do is to pair up some of these terms. Essentially, we want to, put, to pair up the large part so that we can get rid of the annoying absolute value signs that surround the minus on the other side of the certain inequality. Well, we've already done a lot of the work anyway. Mod z, the modulus of this term, z cubed, is 27. We've already worked that out. 5iz is going to have modulus uh, 12, and this thing's going to have modulus 4. So these two terms put together, well, that's going to be 27, and that's going to be about 12. So this term's going to be, sorry, that's going to be 15. This term's going to be about 12, and that's going to be 4. So these are the big terms. And it's usually the term with the highest power involved that's going to be the thing that you hive off. So I'm going to write this this way. This thing is greater than or equal to the absolute value of z cubed minus 5iz minus the absolute value of 4. Well, that's just 4, of course. Right. So now I want to make more rigorous the argument I just said verbally here. Can I prove that that term is big enough so that these outer absolute value signs can be thrown away? You can't just throw away absolute value signs, not when you're dealing with complex numbers. So... Let's put some English around this. You should always at least write some words. As the absolute value of z cubed minus 5iz is bigger than or equal to the absolute value of z cubed minus the absolute value of 5iz. That's just a circle inequality used for two terms, which we know is 27 minus 15 an absolute value, which of course is 12. Right. So we've got this term here is uh, bigger than or equal to 12. We're just going to subtract 4 off, and that's going to give us what we want. So we have this term. As that is true, then the thing we're interested in, z cubed 
minus 5iz plus 4 is bigger than or equal to the absolute value of 12 minus 4, which is the 8 that we were asked to prove.